Hello and welcome to this, the third video in our KPI Expert series. In this video we will explore where and how to look for those areas of business activity or risk that should be the candidates for consideration in our business or departmental KPIs. It's really important here that we expand on our scope of consideration outside that of our management reporting scope and consider areas that might currently be off the table or out of sight, but which might be the source of significant threat or opportunity in the future. We will introduce a few relatively straightforward business analysis methods to help us to achieve this. Some might already be familiar to you, uh, but others might be new. We will show you the way in which we use them and why we think they're important to understanding not only our business performance, but also, also the context in which it operates. If KPIs are the critical few performance areas that merit special management attention, it may seem a little counterintuitive to start off by expanding the areas of performance we are considering. However, it's only by doing this that we can ensure that we are making our choices based on the full picture and that we don't miss anything important that has the potential to undermine our business or our future, future performance. My name is Carl and I'm a business improvement greybeard. The first step to defining our business, department or area of activity is to embrace the concept of the process. This is a very simple but very useful way of co compartmentalising our business world and capturing a clean boundary around our areas of responsibility. We can apply this simplification of our business at pretty much any level, from the company as a whole right the way down to our own personal job scope and responsibilities. Everything that we do is then contained conveniently within the little box named, labelled process. It's a natural next step from the process box to then consider the things that we need to receive into the box in order to do the things that we do, these being our inputs, and also to consider the things that we must deliver from our box, our outputs. Our inputs will include any applications, orders, demands that we receive, and any materials or consumables required for the operation of our processes or the production of our products or services that are then in turn delivered as our outputs. This concept forms the initial building block for the majority of business management philosophies and performance improvement systems with the more complex analytical tools and techniques simply expanding out the detail behind the boxes shown or adding further areas representing the environment and context in which our process activities are operating. Starting from the bigger picture and working from the outside in with our performance considerations, a natural development of the process concept is its expansion into what is called a SIPOC diagram. This is quite a commonly used methodology, again relatively simple by design, but bringing the opportunity to start to capture a pretty accurate representation of our business activities and where they fit within the context of a supply chain. With the SIPOC diagram, we're simply identifying where each of our inputs are sourced from, our suppliers, and who receives each of our outputs, our customers. The supply chain concept is created by the step-by-step -step flow of links from supplier of inputs that are then processed into outputs that are then purchased or received by customers. The example shown on the screen illustrates the conceptual flow represented by the SIPOC diagram, but in reality things are obviously a little more complex than in this example. Generally we will have an, a number of suppliers, 
perhaps supplying a wide range of different component parts or inputs. Similarly, we may produce or deliver a range of different products or services that have a potentially infinite number of clients. Where this is the case, we can of course just expand out the number of boxes at each step, maybe having two or three output boxes and a number of customers for each of these. The logic, however, remains the same. This methodology can be really useful in capturing that overview of our business activity and maybe start our thinking on where within that diagram we have issues or performance concerns. The Greybeard Academy is planning another video specifically on the topic of SIPOC diagrams. This will be considering how to construct them, the variations possible, how to get the most out of them, along with various different use cases. Do keep a look out on, on our YouTube channel if this one sounds interesting. In a similar vein to the SIPOC is the i diagram. With this methodology, rather than expanding out up and down the supply chain, we're doing the same thing but out sideways to explore more of the context in which the process itself is having to operate. The i diagram achieves this through exploring the potential controls, applying constraints or demands upon the process, and the resources that we will need to provide and manage in order for the process to operate correctly. Controls can often manifest in the form of specifications and standards or legislative requirements such as environmental compliance needs or the restrictions on the storage and use of personal data. But these can also be expanded to reflect the influence on our business activities from competitors or from the development and introduction of new and potentially game-changing technologies. Inadequate planning and deployment of resources is a common source of business performance issues. Generally, we can categorise our resources into those of people, materials, equipment and, and the working area. Where issues can often lurk is in the inappropriate application of these resources to the delivery of the process activities. One useful tip when considering the readiness of our resources is to split their planning and application into two areas of consideration. Their capacity, so do we have enough of them to deliver the work demands, and their capability, so are they competent or technically capable enough to achieve the required required standards or tolerances of the work tasks or of the delivered products or services. Like with the SIPOC, the development of an i diagram can be extremely useful in capturing and understanding the context in which we are trying to operate our process. Again, the challenge is to think through the completed diagram and where we are likely to, or already do, suffer issues, disruptions or performance challenges, or on a positive note, where there are the greatest opportunities. The next methodology I would recommend in order to understand the range of performance considerations around our business activity is the QCD system. We actually have a couple of videos on our channel dedicated to this method already, so do check these out if you want to know more. The QCD, or Quality Cost Delivery System, is an operational performance management philosophy that provides a simple but comprehensive suite of performance measures designed to give an holistic oversight of process performance. Operational in this context doesn't mean it's only applicable for manufacturing businesses. It refers to the operation of the business process, whether that's service or production activities. The QCD system is particularly strong in the way it covers all of the bases of operational performance. It starts with the primary effectiveness pro uh, performance of the process in terms of its achieved quality and delivery performance. It then considers the efficiency of the process 
by looking at the performance levels achieved in the use of the resources applied in the process. The logic behind this is focused on cost efficiency. So it's looking at how much of a particular resource we need, at what cost rate and over what period of time. The consistent presence of time as an element of each of, each of these resource efficiency measures leads to the natural addition of lead time as a final component in, in the operational performance uh, considerations. The final methodology I wanted to introduce today, and again an extremely commonly applied one, is the use of process flowcharts. This methodology is concerned with what is actually happening within the process box. Many organisations will already have documented procedures and work instructions and, and these will often already include process flowcharts and these will generally be describing the sequence of events applied in order to transform our process inputs into delivered outputs that meet our customers requirements. Predominantly the process flowchart uses just a small number of different symbols. It uses boxes, diamonds and arrows to capture the standardised route through our process activities. The boxes capture our activity steps, the diamonds represent decisions or option points and the arrows simply sew these together in a, a flow sequence. Process flowcharts have a, a number of valuable uses within the workplace. They can capture the standard verified methodology for achieving the necessary work within the business area and they can also be used as an effective training resource. In terms of our identification of performance management needs as potential candidates for inclusion in our KPIs, the flowchart provides a useful template against which we can capture any processing difficulties, quality problem locations, uh, bottleneck processing steps. We can often capture much of this information by a, a simple walk through the process route, observing the conditions, activities and difficulties at each of the stages. With the suite of pretty straightforward analytical tools we've introduced over the last few slides, we should be able to do a good job of identifying the most significant performance needs and risks associated with the delivery of a good level of performance from our process area. The items that most capture our attention are going to be unique to our own business activities and circumstances, but they are going to be from a pretty generic list of performance categories. These could well include supplier delivery performance concerns, compliance challenges, technology threats or opportunities, operating cost or efficiency issues, or challenges relating to the goods or services that we deliver to our customers through our quality and, and delivery performance. In the next video in the series, we will look at how to distill these identified performance measures and management needs down into a critical few that represent the essence of success for ourselves, our teams and our organisation. We will explore how to prioritise and select these KPIs and, and clarify who and what each one is for and how they need to work in order to achieve our aspirations. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I look forward to meeting you on our next one. Goodbye for now.